Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalaran and in today's video we'll be doing a discussion of some of the 8.2.5 PTR development notes which are going to give us an update on what is to come for World of Warcraft. Some of the things on this list have been known information. Some of them you are going to be expecting but there is going to be one massive update and it's actually kind of surprising. I apologize for being so excited but this stuff just came out for me as of recording this video on a Monday at 3 p.m. East Coast US. So this is the first time I'm seeing the development notes. Let's talk about the notes, see what is future to come, and of course I'll be making 8.2.5 PTR videos in the future or any of the new updates that are coming out for the game. So let's dive into the updates. Let's first talk about the things that we are expecting. Blizzard mentioned Worgen and the Goblin character models. First introduced in World of Warcraft Cataclysm, Worgens and Goblins are getting a long anticipated suit of visual improvements to their character models. With what we know right now of patch 8.2, we actually could be seeing the PTR for patch 8.2 very, very soon, as Blizzard is already making changes to a client for 8.2.5 PTR right now. We just don't have the access to it as it's not public yet. But this means that we'll actually be able to see the updates to Goblins and Worgen. While there's a handful of people excited for the Goblin updates, the Worgen ones are going to be very interesting. There's a good portion of the community of Worgen players that want to see what is Blizzard going to do to the female and male Worgen. The male Worgen appear to be vicious with colored eyes, while the female Worgens have this very Disney doe eyes look. So a lot of people are hoping that the females will also have an option for colored or more vicious face models. Well, we'll see how Blizzard approaches this and hopefully they will deliver. But an update to these two models for Goblin and Worgen has been something that a lot of people have been waiting for since these guys look very outdated with all the other models getting a facelift. Blizzard is also going to be celebrating the 15 years of World of Warcraft. Talk about an MMO that's been running for as long as they did. And we know some of the updates that Blizzard wants to do for the 15th anniversary. We already know there's going to be a mount reward for it called the Obsidian Worldbreaker, which looks just like Deathwing. Now I know that Deathwing gets not quite as much credit or rep as Arthas or Illidan because those guys were some of the best villains World of Warcraft ever created. But you can't deny that the model for Deathwing is awesome. I always thought his whole character look, the Deathwing dragon setup he's got going on, partially metallic, partially scale, and just full of molten fury, I always thought it was just a really awesome design. Very happy to see him coming back as a mount because I'm someone who started playing back in Kata, so I can definitely appreciate riding around on my own Deathwing. It seems like we're getting some faction favoritism, but maybe not so much, and let me explain. A fuzzy B mount is getting added into the game and it's going to be for Alliance players. Alliance players rejoice, Stormsong Valley Beekeepers have figured out how to grow them big enough to ride. Barry the Beekeeper has some quests for you, so you should talk to him to get started on this honey of an adventure. I like the phrasing here, but it does seem like this is only an Alliance based mount. Now, before we go on with faction favoritism, I am someone who plays on a horde, and I do know that there is a quest line on the horde to raise a Pterodex mount and to raise a Triceratops mount. And you start him up as like a baby, and you go and visit him every day, and eventually they grow big enough, and then you get them as a mount reward. So I don't think Alliance actually had something for it. So it seems that the horde actually has two mounts, one flying, one ground, and the Alliance has the bee mount? It seems like that might be the rationalization why Alliance are getting bees. So it's not exactly A, they're just, you know, favorite in Alliance. I think there is a specific horde gets one specific mount, Alliance gets another. It might be a good opportunity to level an Alliance just in case so you can get this mount because I'm pretty sure it's going to be a cross-faction account bound mount so even horde players will be able to ride it. Or maybe the horde players will be able to get somehow that bee mount as well through a different various quest line. We don't really know 100 percent but the meme mount is getting added into the game we'll have to wait and see how you acquire one we also got another raid getting added but not a new raid for bfa rather a time walking raid for cataclysm firelands when cataclysm time walking is active max level players will be able to form a raid group to enter silver inspire once more 
Oh, that actually sounds exciting, because I ran through Ulduar, I never got to run through Black Temple, but Firelands, I wish I could have played that back in the day. Now, I started back in Cataclysm, but I never really got around to raid in Firelands, like, seriously raid. I only got to visit it after Mr. Pandari came out to farm some transmog gear for it, but it looked like a lot of fun and a cool raid overall. So, I'm actually very excited to be able to enter Firelands yet again. This is so cool, and I'm glad that Blizzard is continuing to bring some of the older raids to current content with time walking. I wonder if they'll do something like that for World of Jujinor, but I don't really remember any of the good raids from WAD, because I never really played a lot of the raids in WAD. Maybe they'll add something cool, maybe they'll add a Pandaria raid, because I would love to play through Siege of Agamar all over again, or, maybe better yet, through Throne of Thunder. That was an awesome raid with a lot of bosses, I really like the, the whole theme of it. Maybe they'll do something like that in the future. Finally, we got a massive update to World of Warcraft, introducing Party Sync, whatever that means. During the PTR, we are experimenting with a new mode that makes it easier for players in a party to do quests and play together. Party Sync. When players activate Party Sync, everyone in the party becomes aligned to the same quest state, including phases. By mousing over a quest in your tracker, you can see who is on the quest, what is their progress, who is ready to turn in the quests. So that's awesome, we ran some kind of UI to help people quest together and a little bit more of a party system. There's something else we're going to add try out in PTR, a replay feature quest feature. This will allow players who have already completed a certain quest to replay those quests with their friends for the rewards that are appropriate to the current level, regardless of the original level of the quest. That's actually incredible. We're also relaxing level restrictions on queuing for instance content with your friends. This allows lower level players to queue for content in their level range, higher level player to choose to join them by having the level scaled down while they're in the instance. This feature will be available for dungeons instances for PTR week 1, with PvP instances being flagged in the following weeks. Please note that unlike time walking, when your level is scaled down via party sync, we will temporarily lose access to abilities and powers such as Azerite traits with requirements that exceed your reduced level. This is a system that's very similar to some of the other MMOs out there, one of them being Final Fantasy XIV, for example, where you actually do get scaled to level, but also the abilities and certain other passives. Your gear, I think, will still somewhat help your character, but it'll again be scaled down so heavily Wow, this is actually kind of crazy. So as an example, let's say you wanted to level with a friend. Let's say your friend's level is like 15. They just unlock dungeons and you can actually do dungeons with your friend to help them level and you will still get some sort of a reward for your character for doing this dungeon with your friend. It will actually allow you to scale yourself down so you can actually help somebody level. It doesn't even matter what level anybody is. And you'll even apparently be able to replay certain quests if you want to quest together with a friend and you'll be able to do these quests to together as in you already done the zones you've already done the quest it's all way out of your league for item level and even level but your friend is level 25 and he needs help questing or just wants to spend some time with you and you can actually kind of let downgrade yourself for a moment in order to help replay certain quests that you've done in order to help them complete and you'll even get rewarded for it at least that's what i'm reading roughly from what we have here we haven't got to test this we don't know full details but this is the information we have right now and so far this sounds exciting there's been rumors for World of Warcraft that they are gonna do something with level scaling so you can play with other players of various different levels. And it seems like even PvP instances will be flagged for this in the following weeks. While I'm still trying to digest everything together, I really do need to see this in person. I need to see how this works. I want to see how this works. I want to test this out as soon as it comes out to PTR. But it seems like this is a great system for players that are playing together in World of Warcraft. Whether you're max level, low level, you can still do stuff together. And even the main level character, it seems, will get rewards for helping out somebody level. This is a very community-driven, community-focused update, it seems. So you're able to play with people you want to play with. And if you want to invite your friends, let's say, to the content, you want to play with your friends that, have, let's say, haven't played the game in a while, this would be a great way to introduce them back into the game. And with it, it seems that RecruiterFriend is making a comeback with all the different updates. So they're bringing back 8.2.5 RecruiterFriend system to get your friends back into the game. And they're doing this party thing so you can actually play with your friends. 
I feel like there's been a lot of moments where, let's say, your friend comes back to the game and they just want to start a new character. So then you're like, alright, I'll level with you. You both start leveling together and sometimes your guys' schedules may not align. You have priorities for your main level character, whether it's raids, PvP, or whatever. And sometimes your friend just starts playing without you and then everybody just gets desynced in levels and then you can't play together and then people tend to lose interest. This is a thing that's been happening since, I want to say, when Vanilla. Because let's say you're kids in vanilla and you come home from school, you don't have any other responsibilities, you can play a lot. Or if you're a, a couple adults that want to join together in a guild and just play, but you have other IRL responsibilities, this will allow you through all these IRL responsibilities, especially with people dedicating their mains and some people spending more time on their mains than alts, you don't actually even have to leave your main. If you have the availability and your friend has the availability, you can just join your friend in their dungeon. There's also a question of what kind of rewards are you gonna get? Like what if you, let's say you're a main character and you're trying to get your uh, tune maxed out on your neck levels, AP, you're trying to tackle the difficult fights on Mythic, but a buddy of yours is around and instead of telling your friend, hey, I gotta go grind islands like there's no tomorrow or instead you get to join your friend, help him level with this party sync level squish system and you get AP while doing it. Maybe as much AP as you would just doing dailies. So instead of grinding dailies, you're helping your friend and you're still gaining that necklace level so you can still do the raids and the dungeons as you're still growing with your character. I think this could be really good. And maybe you can earn maybe some honor on the side when you turn on war mode and you party sync level scale to your friend's level and you guys do some battlegrounds together you maybe get more honor because you're helping them out or something rather i think this could be really awesome a billion possibilities come to mind but the one thing i will say is i cannot wait to test the system out for myself as soon as this is available on ptr i want to see what this is like i want to see how it functions i want to see how effective this is and the type of rewards but this could potentially be the greatest thing that i think nobody ever expected out of blizzard and maybe it might be one of the best things that world of warcraft could need for the future of leveling especially with your friends thank you guys so much for watching this video i do hope you enjoyed let me know your thoughts about this new party scaling system. I'm very excited to check it out and I'll make videos on it as well as other topics I'll cover today as soon as they're available. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see all of you in another video.